This story is also insane, but completely predictable, completely mask off. When we say that these guys who are in uh, control of our institutions, whether it be the fucking governor's office, I mean, and when we say that they're white supremacists, I, I mean it. This is a perfect... This is a perfect demonstration of this reality, okay? That's it. There is no two ways about it. There's no way to get around it. It's just the truth. I don't know why the fuck people try to hide it. I don't know what the fuck the reason is, but here is what happened. Uh, last year, we covered this briefly in, in Texas. There was a guy who drove into a crowd of Black Lives Matter protesters and then shot someone, Okay. He was, uh, uh, I mean, he was investigated. He was found uh, guilty. And the Texas governor now is saying, or has said, as soon as it lands on my desk, I am going to pardon him. Let's take a look. Governor Greg Abbott is pushing the state's parole board to recommend a pardon for a U.S. Army sergeant convicted of murder on Friday. Daniel Perry was convicted of killing a protester during a Black Lives Matter rally back in 2020. He says he fired his weapon in self-defense after he says protesters surrounded his car as he drove through downtown Nashville. His lawyers argue he had the right to open fire after one demonstrator, he says, raised an assault rifle at him. CNN's Camila Bernal joins us now with the latest. Uh, Camila, very unusual case to see a governor weigh in so soon right after this whole matter was adjudicated in court. <coughs> Yeah, this is not over, but Governor Greg Abbott is pointing to self-defense, pointing to standard ground laws in Texas. And look, there are some in conservative media that have been encouraging the governor to pardon Perry. And even Kyle Rittenhouse has been very vocal on Twitter. Rittenhouse I just don't understand, like, uh, why he felt insecure that there were other guns around. Almost like this is exactly what I said at the time, which was relevant then and is relevant now that more guns equals less safety and that, uh, you know, bringing guns to protest is not a good idea in general. Obviously, the guy who got shot doesn't deserve it. Don't misunderstand me, but, like, that is what happens when there are more guns. That guy seemed to be very interested in, in getting a fucking kill out of the situation regardless. Uh, so... Let's, let's House continue. was acquitted after he shot and killed two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin, during protests there. He's been asking for money for the legal defense. He says he knows what this is all about. On the other hand, the Travis County uh, District Attorney speaking out recently and saying that this is very troubling and saying that in the legal world, it is a jury, not a governor, who gets to decide this. That's a statement that we got from Jose Garza of Travis County. County uh, very recently. Now, in terms of the case, what happened here was in 2020 in Austin, Texas. Uh, Daniel Perry is driving for a rideshare company and he gets to the area where all the protesters are. Uh, the key here is that he encounters Garrett Foster, who was 28 years old at the time. He was carrying an AK 47. And Perry's defense says that Foster held up or was trying to essentially raise that AK-47, and that's when Perry felt that his life was in jeopardy. He shot and killed Foster, who you see there on your screen. Um, so yes, this is political. This is also in terms of what happens next, part of the legal process, because look, uh, Perry has not been sentenced. He has not appealed his conviction. So this is really not over, and the family of uh, Garrett Foster reacting after that verdict on Friday. Here is his father. I'd just like to say we're uh, thankful for the legal team that represented us and uh, the jury, and we're happy with the verdict. We uh, very sorry for his family as well. It just there's no winners in this, and uh, just glad it's over. Now, Governor Greg Abbott is asking for this process to go quickly, to be expedited. We'll see what happens. Of course, there is going to be a lot of opposition on the side of the DA and those who are really trying to support the Foster family through all of this, Jim. So let's discuss uh, this very unusual case with former federal prosecutor Michael Zeldin. Uh, Michael, good to see you. Uh, what, what is your reaction to Governor Abbott's announcement that he is working 
uh, to pardon uh, this man just one day after he was convicted of murder, as Camila was saying a few moments ago, he hasn't even been sentenced yet. That's right. And you have to understand the context of this. This. So oh, yeah. Uh, it, what's important here, I don't know why the fuck CNN is not bringing this shit up. There is so much extra information that they're basically not mentioning. There's also even interrogation footage that I kind of wanted to watch. But yeah, he was convicted and found guilty because he sent multiple texts to friends prior to it, explicitly saying he was going to kill BLM protesters by provoking them and then claiming self-defense. He literally fucking said that he, he was looking for a confirmed kill, something along those lines. That's the, like, you don't get, in, te in the Texas courts, you don't get a fucking uh, guilty, uh, you don't get, like, a guilty sentencing when you're, you know, when uh, unless you have like a premeditated fucking kill uh, that you very openly were, were uh, talking about. Um, let's look at some of the, yeah, Perry, U.S. Army Sergeant who was driving for Uber at the time. By the way, shot and killed 28-year-old Garrett Foster. Isn't Garrett Foster also a fucking uh, uh, veteran? Why don't they ever mention that? Like, what the fuck? If you're if you're like pro BLM, it doesn't matter. Like, you're if you die, it, your veteran status like doesn't fucking mean anything. It's so strange. Okay, like, why the fuck is Vice News covering it like this? You're not gonna fucking mention that the guy who he shot and killed is also a fucking veteran. Anyway, yeah. Perry's lawyer said during the trial that a crowd swarmed him and he feared for his life because Foster was holding an AK-47 that Perry ultimately acted in self-defense under the Texas Stand Your Ground statute. But evidence presented during the trial refuted Perry's claims and included private messages and social posts where he seemingly fantasized about having the opportunity to kill people. I'm going to have to kill a few people on my way to work. They are rioting outside my apartment complex, Perry wrote to a friend in June 2020, a month before he killed Foster. Remember, Kyle Rittenhouse did this exact same shit, but he got away with it. In another message, Perry wrote, I might go to Dallas to shoot looters. The case was reminiscent of the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse who killed two protesters later that year during an uprising in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Unlike Rittenhouse, however, Perry was actually found guilty of murder Friday following a week of deliberations in Texas that can carry a sentence of anywhere from five years of life in prison. Rittenhouse himself, Fox News host Tucker Carlson, immediately began lobbying Abbott to pardon Perry. This is a legal atrocity, they said. You want to know why they said that? Because... They want this shit to be legal. That's it. They want premeditated murder to be legal. That's it. There's no other reason. He went and he killed a BLM protester. He openly stated that he wanted to kill a Black Lives Matter protester. A veteran as well, by the way. Not that it matters in this circumstance because he was on the wrong side of politics. Less than 24 hours after Perry was convicted and before he was even sentenced, Abbott said in a Saturday statement he'd moved to pardon Perry, saying Texas' stand-your-ground law cannot be nullified by a jury or progressive district attorney. How the fuck do you not get mad at this? I don't know, like, I don't know what to say even. Abbott said that he requested the state board overseeing pardons to consider recommending a pardon for Perry and that I look forward to approving the board's pardon recommendation as soon as it hits my desk. Abbott also Abbott said he also wants to prioritize reining in rogue district attorneys, ostensibly a reference to Travis County District Attorney Jose Garza, whose office brought the case against Perry. Remember, these are the people who are saying DAs are letting violent criminals get away. Fascists don't care. They want their guys to be able to be above the law, their kind of violence, and their 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 kind of fascist acts of violence to be above the law that they can get away with it. They just don't want the other side to, to be able to do anything, okay? They want life in prison for fucking minor shit while they simultaneously fantasize about, uh, you know, letting people who are murderers in cold blood roam free in the fucking streets, okay? Garrett Foster's partner, Whitney Mitchell... Oh, by the way, this part is really important. If I remember correctly, because I remember covering this when it happened, Whitney Mitchell is in a wheelchair. And part of the part of the process that is important, Whitney Mitchell is Garrett Foster's, uh, Foster's partner. She's a black woman. 
She's in a wheelchair. She's wheelchair bound. I don't know if that's the ableist term. Sorry. The reason why I'm mentioning that this is important is because he was literally pushing her. If I'm not mistaken. And he was worried that his girlfriend in a wheelchair was about to get fucking hit. Okay? Yeah, she was in a wheelchair that night from what I recall. Yeah, of course she was. She's like a... Isn't she uh I, I don't even think she has legs. I think she's uh, she has ampu she's amputee. The governor has immediately taken that away since he announced there are two legal systems in Texas, one for those with power like Mr. Perry and one for everyone else. There's a quadruple amputee. Abbott, who is in his third term and ninth year as governor, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Recommend uh, pardoning. In 2021, the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles recommended pardoning George, George Floyd posthumously for a minor drug conviction from 2004 for which Floyd had been convicted based on a testimony of a Houston cop who had later been found to have repeatedly fabricated evidence. But Abbott did not grant that pardon. And then the following year, the same board recommended against the pardon unanimously. So he wouldn't even give a symbolic posthumous pardon to George Floyd when the cop that fucking... Uh, got him guilty of a charge, was literally lying repeatedly for fabricated evidence. It's That's it. There's nothing you need to know any more than this. After hearing from civilian eyewitnesses and expert witnesses and deliberating for over 15 hours, the jury reached the unanimous decision that Daniel Perry did not kill Garrett Foster in self-defense and was guilty of murder beyond a reasonable doubt. All right, if you want to be more pissed, here you go. Protesters allege Austin police dumped quadruple amputee activist Whitney Mitchell out of her wheelchair. The fiancé of Garrett Foster was attending a police brutality protest. You want to understand how the fucking law works. That's how it fucking works. I'm not going to lie, it is, Texas is dog shit in general, but, I mean, this is somehow even more dog shit by Texas standards, like, it's, it never ceases to shock me how fucking awful uh, red states can sometimes be, or just um, the American criminal justice system in general, it is violent, it's awful, it's mistreatment of marginalized groups is, is deliberate, systematic, disgusting, unacceptable, and yet it continues. Obviously, there is no fucking party of law and order. That's not, that's not real. The law and order is simply a dog whistle to justify doing whatever kind of brutality to marginalized communities and legitimizing that. Oh. Sergeant Perry is 70 miles away from his base driving around in a, a Uber car of some sort. He encounters these protesters, and rather than turn around and leave, he drives his car into the middle of them. And you can't forget Charlottesville, where people were killed by a car doing the exact same thing. So as he's approached by the victim, instead of, again, leaving the scene as he could have, he opens fire on him. The jury deliberates 17 hours, Jim, over an eight-day trial, and they convict him of murder. They reject his right to defend himself defense and the and governor abbott should let the jury's verdict stand there's no basis in law or fact for this so it therefore smacks of politics because this was a black lives matter protest that is exactly what it is that context because what governor greg abbott is saying is that if you go to a fucking black lives matter rally and you shoot people there that's a good thing that's what he is saying Abbott, Greg Abbott, whatever, shut up. That's the, that's the point. That's why Florida passed the fucking kill protesters. You can run them over law. There were a bunch of states that pushed it even before Charlottesville and even after Charlottesville, okay?
Anyway, in Seattle, we had the brother of a cop drive his car into a protest and shot someone. Literally nothing happened to him. Shit happens in blue states, too. Yeah, I mean, cops are above the law. Cops' family members are above the law. Meanwhile, liberals fucking lose their shit. Footage of Daniel Perry's police interview after he killed Garrett Foster was played in the courtroom during his murder trial. Former Austin police homicide detective David Fugit was the one to conduct the interview with Perry. In it, Detective Fugit had Perry demonstrate how Foster carried his rifle. How high did that barrel come up? We're not talking about right now. Okay, was it aimed at you? I believe it was aimed at me. I believe he was going to aim it at me. I didn't want to give him a chance to aim at me, you know? And then what Perry did while he was sitting in the driver's seat. Hello, Chelsea. Yeah. Bro, you mean a little fortune to lose it? It probably went straight into the person looking for trouble? Brother, they open, he openly said it. He said it. I didn't want to give him a chance to aim. By the way, is already is enough. Paired up with the fact that he said he wanted to fucking kill people at a BLM protest. Like, what do you want? What the fuck more do you want? Why was this man doing Uber rides with a loaded assault rifle in the car? Hmm. I wonder why he texted, posted on social media about how he wants to kill Black Lives Matter protesters and then was driving around directly in the vicinity of a Black Lives Matter protest with a loaded assault rifle in his car. I guess he was just, you know, he was just trying to fucking uh, do his job, right? Yeah. Fucking scumbag. I, I don't want to be shot, sir. Perry said he shot five times. He believes the whole encounter was less than 15 seconds. Sometime after the interview, Perry called Detective Fugit to find out more information for his lawyer, reiterating that he was scared but, quote, felt bad. He was a person. I feel bad. You know, yeah. I just wish to tell it differently, you know? I honestly. Did not want him, want him to die. All I wanted to do was to incapacitate. Oh, at the expense of getting dog poly at a Glock? Sorry, we didn't have an assault rifle at a Glock or some other concealed carry gun. Doesn't take away from him being a piece of shit. Regardless, he fucking said it doesn't matter if he has a fucking Glock on him. That's insane, too. But unfortunately for Texas, it's normal. But hey, guess what? This is what happens when it is normal. That's the whole point. That's why we fucking talk about how it's insane that you could just like carry a loaded fucking weapon in your on your belt or in your car that you could just like pull out and shoot someone with. The guy got shot, flagged him with an AK. Yeah, it, it doesn't, dude. You can you can say whatever the fuck you want, okay? Ooh, big scary gun. He's got an AK-47. Motherfucker, the entire point of like an armed society is a polite society is that an armed society is supposed to be a polite society. You can't turn around and be like, well, okay, now I'm scared. If we find out that you are, I don't know, protesting Black Lives Matter, uh, I get to kill you for free? Like, that's insane. You can't have it both ways, which, by the way, fascists are. Uh, and the vic the fucking guy said the victim had the gun not fucking aiming at him he said i didn't want to give him a sh chance to shoot me
Yeah, he said, I didn't want to give him a chance to point it at me. That's what he said. I want to see more of this. I want to see more of this uh, uh, footage, the interview footage, and the shit that they showed in court. One thing that Perry kept mentioning throughout the videos and recordings is that he was texting a woman and driving. He adds he was not paying attention. That's one of the reasons why he accidentally drove in the crowd of protesters. The state presented those messages between him and the woman. The woman was a passenger he picked up for working for Uber earlier in the night. She asked him for $200 for the hangout, to which he declined. Pamela Mazak, an APD crime analyst, was called to stand the breakdown. Her analysis of Perry's Uber and cell phone location records from the night of July 25th, 2020. She said that last text Perry received or sent out was two minutes before he entered the intersection with the protesters. The defense argues that Perry's was not, Perry was not in the downtown area between the hours of 740 and seven uh, and nine thirty p.m. The incident happened around nine fifty one. The state presented a Facebook post to Perry's. He wrote, "Send them to Texas. We will show them why we say don't mess with Texas." The comment was in reference to a different post about protesters and looters in another state. Might have to kill a few people and other texts that suggest Daniel Perry intended to commit murder at the Black Lives Matter demonstration. Look at the difference between the Austin Chronicle and even fucking Vice News, by the way, and the way that they cover this shit. Austin Chronicle openly states Garrett Foster was a 28-year-old Air Force veteran openly carrying an AK-47 across his chest, approached the car. The driver's side window opened and Perry shot Foster four times in the chest and abdomen. Perry turned himself into Austin police seconds later, claiming he shot in self-defense after Foster raised the barrel of his gun. Austin Police Department officers questioned Perry and let him go. Garza presented the case to a Travis County grand jury shortly after taking office in 2021. The grand jury indicted Perry for murder and assault. The testimony confirming Perry's anger towards protesters came on the third day, uh, third day of the trial as prosecutors displayed text messages and social media comments showing that he thought about killing them. I might have to kill a few people on my way to work. They are rioting outside my apartment complex, Perry wrote to a friend in June of 2020. I might go to Dallas to shoot looters, he wrote in another occasion. Perry also encouraged violence in a variety of social media posts. In addition, Perry speculated about how he might get away with such a killing by claiming self-defense, as he is now doing. Prosecutors presented a Facebook Messenger chat between Perry and a friend, Michael Holcomb, which occurred two weeks before he shot Foster. In it, Perry argued that shooting protesters was legal if it was in self-defense. And Governor Greg Abbott said, that's exactly what is the case. If you shoot a Black Lives Matter protester, it is in self-defense, and I will free you. Even if a jury of your peers decide that you are guilty in a unanimous decision. How fucking insane that, like, the, the otherwise insanely right-wing uh, uh, judicial system, the courts in the state of motherfucking Texas, found this man guilty of killing someone, okay, murder, first-degree murder, and the governor was like, nah, nah. Holcomb, who was called to stand Wednesday afternoon, seemed to try to talk Perry down. Aren't you a CDL holder too? He asked, referring to the men's license that carry concealed handguns. We went through the same training. Shooting after creating an event where you have to shoot is not a good shoot. None of this seeming premeditation was on display after Perry, Perry turned himself to APD officers. In his 911 call, Perry claims that he drove into the protesters by mistake. After taking a wrong turn, body camera video played the next day shows Perry after being taken into custody telling officers Foster had pointed his gun at him. I didn't know he was going to aim it at me, Perry says. I thought he was going to kill me. I've never been so scared in my life. Huh. This claim that Foster raised the barrel of his AK-47 is, of course, what? Is, of course, Perry's principal hope to escape a murder conviction. It was refuted over and over during the first three days of the trial by witnesses who were near Foster that night. All repeated a version of the same story. They heard squealing tires as a car sped into a group of about 20 protesters. The protesters, some of whom, who had almost been hit by the car, slapped and kicked it. Garrett Foster strode to the car's side and issued an order to the driver. 
All the witnesses insisted that Foster did not raise the barrel of his gun. According to the DA's lead prosecutor, Guillermo Gonzalez, his gun was recovered with the safety still on and no bullet in the chamber. The courtroom where the trial is unfolding is less than a mile from where Foster died. It has been packed through the first week with family members and young people who protested alongside Foster and his fiance Whitney Mitchell. Foster's family sits. Whitney Mitchell is Foster's fiance, or was Foster's fiance, who is uh, quadriplegic and was in a wheelchair on scene. The reason why this is relevant is because Foster was like literally pushing her around and probably was in fear of her safety due to her lack of mobility. Because she was in a fucking wheelchair on the street during a Black Lives Matter protest as a car was clearly trying to drive into the Black Lives Matter protest. Foster's family sits in the front row on the right side of the courtroom. His mother, Sheila, has wept as pictures of her son's dead body are displayed and attorneys reenact his killing. Perry's parents, visibly worried, sit behind him in the front row of the left side of the courtroom. He sits beh beside his attorneys, Clint Broden and Doug O'Connell, wearing a dark-colored suit, his hair buzzed close, and his face dipping down. There you go. Make no mistake. Greg Abbott is pardoning him because he thinks it's good that it happened. There is no law and order. None of these people actually care about law and order. It just means, like, but getting gonna... our way. Getting our fucking way. 